Hi there, here is Danny. Welcome you all to the outdoor Sick Biker Studio. Welcome all the guys, men and women, on the other side of that little lens. Uh, I decided to make more materials, more content for the beginner cyclists because, especially on the Polish channel, I'm asked about it so much. So there you go. This is a new series about types of the bikes. It will be road bikes, it will be mountain bikes, but we start with the mountain bike types and today uh, I'm gonna answer the question what is the cross-country bike and it's really important for the beginners to watch this one because there's so many miscon misconceptions about XC bicycles so there you go uh, I'm gonna tell you what you can expect from the XC bike what you will never you should never expect from from the cross-country bike and finally who who will be could be quite happy buying XC bike and uh, for whom I would definitely not recommend buying a cross-country bike so let's start the easiest explanation of what XC bike means is that this is a mountain bike made for cross-country racing so these are racing mountain bikes these are not commuters these are these are not all-rounders not at all not XC bikes uh, these are made for racing cross-country racing that means uh, racing on the loop on the closed loop on the laps uh, normally it takes about one and a half hours and these bikes are made to be super fast and super efficient on such type of terrain let me explain why so what we can expect from a cross-country bike we've got two XC bikes you are you know these two very well on my channel because these are my bikes uh, this is the hardtail so you can expect that a cross-country bike will either have a front suspension and a hard tail or it will have both front and rear suspension these both bikes are made for cross-country uh, which one to choose it will be another topic for the cross-country racers but uh, what can we expect from the bikes you know there is no XC uh, bikes without a, a suspension fork in the front because uh, cross-country races are really tough uh, in terms of the uh, technical terrain so that's one thing another thing uh, we can we can expect uh, those forks and the rear suspensions to have just about 90 to 100 millimeters maybe 110 on some bikes but just between 90 and say just above 100 millimeters of travel that means the suspension on either full suspension bike or hardtail is made to give you the best speed on the course not the best comfort remember uh, the sack you are setting on the on the 90 or 100 millimeter fork or a damper is not going to give you a super comfy ride but super fast on the technical terrain and also efficient so these are made not to soak up too much power from your legs that's very very important second thing we can expect from the cross-country bike is the geometry that means this bike will put you into position uh, that will be the most efficient for the cross-country races. That, races that means steep climbs steep descents uh, these need to be nimble but not comfortable just as the suspension it's not for comfort it's for giving you speed and efficiency uh, on the course this saddle is actually lowered here because I'm just having fun on my flat pedals here but this saddle now you can see how it looks like this saddle is higher than the handlebars and it's not putting you in the uh, comfortable position but for sure uh, if you're gonna go for a super steep climb this bike will uh, will handle pretty pretty well that also means if you look at the head tube of a cross-country bike it's pretty small or low you can also look at this one here on my FSI pretty low and then the stem goes pretty low of course you can put some spacers uh, like here for example those spacers from above I could put just under the stem and higher the position uh, you could you can exchange the handlebars from flat to to riser bars you can exchange the stem uh, which will be rising of course but in, for general uh, these have been designed to put you into racing uh, position all right so we know the suspension 
we know the position on the bike, uh, uh, the geometry of the bike, it's gonna be quite nimble, but I would say hard days will be really nimble. Full suspension bikes are not that nimble and that will be on the other topic comparing the full suspension and a hardtail. Uh, but once more, geometry not really super stable on high speed. Um, they are now playing with different offsets of the forks and so on and so on. But it it's really has to be a sweet spot uh, between stability on the high speed and being pretty pretty nimble uh, on those turns in the technical terrain. Okay, the next thing uh, what we can expect from the cross-country bike is that it will have 29er uh, wheels, so 29 inch wheels. Almost, almost no brands now produce large and extra large uh, frame size with the 27.5 even. I'm not talking about 26 even, 27.5. So cross-country bikes means big wheels. If you are smaller, uh, not that tall, maybe medium or small size, then you're gonna get 27.5, but cross-country racing bikes, large frames, extra large frames, 29 inch wheels. That means this, these bikes will be a bit heavier because of the wheels and also these bikes will be a little bit longer, maybe not higher. Uh, the height can be the same as on the 27.5 maybe the front end will change a little bit uh, but uh, it will be a bit longer and that's not as nimble as 27.5 um, inch wheels now the drivetrain from the modern cross-country bikes we expect the drivetrain to be one by that means we have one chainring in the front and some number of gears in the rear, it may be 11 or it may be 12 as uh, on the SRAM Eagle. So either 11 uh, or 12 gears in the rear and just one chainring in the front. What do you expect from that? You can expect that you will be able to still spin with your pedals uh, until maybe 45 kilometers per hour, not more. You, you're not going to be able to spin uh, over 50 kilometers per hour. You can put some uh, some uh, larger chain rings in the front, that's for sure. But expect that bike to enable you to be spinning, speeding up your bike with your legs until reaching 45 kilometers per hour, roughly. Now, the lowest gear, so the easiest gear for the uphill will be pretty low, especially on the Eagle, SRAM Eagle, it is really low, really nice and comfy, uh, but still it's not going to give you the same gears range as the double or a triple chain, uh, chain, uh, chain sets. So remember about that, this drivetrain is uh, to be efficient on the cross-country race. So it's, it's going to be simple, um, lightweight, and with this gearing ratio, you're gonna be good on the cross-country uh, cross um, racing uh, loop, all right? So that's what, what we need to know about it. What we would not expect from the cross-country bikes is to be comfortable. So these are made for cross-country races, which last for about 90 minutes. Don't expect this bike to be comfy for a whole day ride, for a weekend ride or some, some traveling. Yes, I've made 180 kilometers travel on this bike to my friend and then uh, two days later I came back to my home 180 kilometers on the full suspension bike, on the cross-country bike, but cross-country bikes are pretty much all I've been riding for 25 years now or more even. Uh, so uh, I have the flexibility. I do like the bike the bikes, but it doesn't mean that the saddle was comfy for me at the end of my whole day ride it was my butt was really aching. These saddles are gonna support you for one and a half hour lightweight uh, not press your your uh, areas some areas of your of your body, uh, but these are not really really comfy for long rides so remember about that the position on the bike is not going to give you comfortable rides so uh, if you don't have the flexibility and maybe you are a little bit overweight you have a larger belly uh, position on this bike would not really be uh, comfy the suspension don't expect the suspension to be simply comfortable uh, it is simply efficient and allows you to really go over the drops, over the rock gardens, 
fast, but if you search for comf comfort, you need a trail bike, which I'm going to cover in the in the future uh, episodes. All right, so. Don't expect these bikes to be versatile. These bikes are made for racing, cross-country race specifically. Now, you can expect these bikes to be pretty good on marathon, marathon uh, races, which are long, that's, that's correct. Uh, but still, on the marathon races you seek for the uh, efficiency, probably you would go for full suspension bike if there is, um, if there is some bumpy terrain. So that's really important. Now, whom would I recommend? and whom would I not recommend the bike. If you think about racing, if you've been riding mountain bikes for some months, maybe years, and you think about, mm, I, I think I would go for some training and racing, cross-country bike may be for you. Uh, if you are racing cross-country, you're gonna, you're gonna have cross-country bike, that's, that's uh, easy. Uh, whom I would not recommend the bike, maybe that's the more important thing. I don't recommend the bike for the beginners, simply put. Uh, one important thing, if you think about, if you are a beginner uh, and you think about $500 bike, it's not a cross-country bike. It's not, and that would be the bike I would recommend to you. Uh, it's not disadvantage that it's not XC bike, uh, but the $500 bike will be called sport mountain bike, uh, all-terrain bike, sometimes also tra trail bike, which can be misleading because trail bikes are also expensive. Um, like really hard stuff for some harder rides, harder use uh, bicycles, but these beginner sport trail bikes will give you to the trails, take you to the trails. So like, trails like these in the forest, uh, also some commuting will be okay, but these are not cross-country bikes. So cross-country bikes are not made for beginners. If you don't have the flexibility, as I said, maybe you are a little bit overweight, you want to lose the weight, the saddle will not be good for you if you really weigh some, some, some pounds. The geometry will not be for your back and your muscles. Start with, if you want to have mountain bike, start with like sportive kind of beginner's uh, mountain bike. So that's, that's something I would really uh, want you to know because cross-country bikes are made for cross-country races. I love cross-country bikes. I do pretty much all on the bikes. Now I'm just having fun on the, on the flat, flat pedals doing some, some tricks on my hardtail. Uh, but uh, I know these bikes. So I know the geometry. I do like those. And, and that's it. So not for beginners, not for those who just think about what mountain bikes are. Just use, just start with some really comfy, higher position, uh, maybe more stable, maybe 27.5 wheels, even I would say, uh, and then you can decide for yourself. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Questions as always, just uh, below the video. And I'm gonna see you very, very soon in the next episodes about the types of the bikes and also comparison, full suspension versus hardtail.